Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all of your blessings in our lives. You are so good. There are so many things for us to be thankful for. We just take a moment just to praise you and thank you for all of those things. You are good and every good and perfect gift comes from you. You're working all things together for our good. And you've given us your Holy Spirit. We thank you for the study that's before us. And we ask, Lord, that you'd give us eyes to see and ears to hear and hearts to receive and obey. And apply your truth to our lives. Fill us with your Spirit. Let your will be done in our lives, we ask, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're beginning a brand new study. I'm excited about this study. It's titled, The Fruit of the Spirit. The Fruit of the Spirit. When an individual is born again, the Spirit of God resides on the inside of them. Christ dwells in their heart by faith. The Holy Spirit lives within them and began, begins a process of developing the very nature of God in that person. And so we're going to take the next nine weeks and we're going to look at the fruit of the Spirit. Now there's a debate among believers and scholars as we look at the fruit of the Spirit. Some say that the fruit of the Spirit is love, and then everything listed afterwards is a manifestation of that love, and then there are others who see each one of these as individual fruit themselves. We'll leave that for another time and study. What I believe the Lord would have us do in this study is, is to devote our time looking at each one of those characteristics because they reveal the nature of God, and I believe that nature is what the Holy Spirit desires to develop and manifest in the life of you and me, of every believer. So I want to read our text. We'll read this text before each study, and then we're going to look at uh, several scriptures. I will have to say, especially with this first one that we're going to look at, which is love, it is endless what the Bible says about love, and we'll not be able to do an exhaustive study in this few minutes that we have together, but we'll look at several verses, and we'll see what love is and how love is to be manifested in the life of every believer. But turn with me in your Bibles to Galatians chapter 5. I want to read verses 16 through 26. We're going to focus our attention on verse 22. But Paul says this, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, lust, for the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do those things which ye would. For if ye be led of the Spirit... You are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But... The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. Let me read verse 22 again. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. These are wonderful things just to read and to contemplate. These describe the very nature of God, the very nature of the Holy Spirit who is God, who dwells, dwells in the heart and life of the believer. Now, the Bible talks a lot about fruit in and of itself, another exhaustive 
study that we're not able to take, but I want to lay a quick foundation of, of what the Scripture has to say about fruitfulness in our lives. Turn with me to Luke's Gospel, chapter 6. I want to read verses 43 through 45. We're talking about treasuring what, what's within a man, what's in a man's heart. And for the born-again believer, it is Christ, the Holy Spirit. Jesus says this, For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. What's within will be revealed without. And so Jesus says what's in the heart will come out. If we are filled with the Holy Spirit... The fruit of the Spirit will be manifest from our lives. And there are many ways for us to remain filled with the Spirit and to be fruitful. I want to read several passages of Scripture. The first one is found in Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. He is ever green and ever fruitful, because he abides in the word. Jesus tells us that the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. Once again, being filled with the Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, manifests fruit. So staying in the Word is a way to stay in the Spirit. In Jeremiah chapter 17, Jeremiah talks about our trust being, being part of that process. Jeremiah 17 verses 7 and 8 says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord is. Let me read that again. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope is the Lord is. Notice this. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. As we are filled with the Holy Spirit, as we are filled with the Word of God, as we trust in the Lord, fruit is manifested in our lives. There's another thing that we do to manifest fruit, and that's found in John's Gospel, chapter 15. Jesus says this, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, ye can do nothing. He says fruit. Later on, he says more fruit. Then he says much fruit. And it all comes from abiding in Christ, dwelling in him, finding our life source from Him, we are to bear fruit. And that's what we're going to talk about over the next nine weeks, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the very nature of God being manifest in our lives by the work of His Spirit. Now, when we read Galatians 5.22, the first thing we read there is love. Love. We could spend nine, we could spend 90 years studying love, but with the few minutes we have, we'll, we'll look at some high points about it, and I would encourage you to dig deeper on your own. One of the most familiar passages of Scripture in the Bible is John 3, 16. For God so loved, loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus describes it this way in John 15, verse 13. He says, No greater love hath any man than this, that he lay down his life for his friend. That's love. God's love. Well, God is love. Turn with me to 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. I want to read a few passages there. I recognize that we're moving quickly. Hopefully that doesn't uh, frustrate you or make you nervous. There's just so many things I would love to say. 
So I just want to get as much in with the time we have as, as possible. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says this, Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for God is love. I just picked up the last verse of verse 6. The, the numbers wore off in my Bible here, so I apologize for that. Let's just start with verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In this was manifest the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through Him. Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. This is how we know love. By the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Beloved, if God so loved us, we ought also to love one another. No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and His love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in Him, and He in us, because He hath given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoso shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in Him, and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, He says it again. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. We know what love is by looking to what God did by giving and sending his Son. Now, a, a, another way of knowing what love is is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Love is described here, and I use the King James, and the word love is, is used the word charity in its place here, but it's, it's the same as love, it says this, Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never Faileth. What a description of love. The heart of a man cries out for this. This is the very love of God. And it is God's desire that as His Spirit works within us, that the very nature of God is developed in us, and His love overflows in us and through us to all those who are around us. This is God's desire that we live in His love. Now in John 15, 12, Jesus says, This is the commandment that I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. It's God's love we're talking about. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not my love, your love. It's God's love at work within us. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus is asked the question, Lord, what is the greatest commandment? What's the greatest thing you require of us? And Jesus said, the first commandment, the great commandment is this, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. And then he says the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In, in these two things we see there are three dimensions of love. If we want to be fulfilled in God's love, we need to allow all three of these dimensions. And one, I believe, is going to be a little shocking the first one is an upward dimension. Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. This, this is the most important connection. If we don't get this right, love will not manifest, ma manifest itself in our lives. Then he says, love your neighbor. And love has an outward dimension. So there's an upward dimension. There's an outward dimension. But he doesn't stop there. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. Because of God's love, we are able to love ourselves because God loves us. Now, the world talks about self-esteem and all these things. And, and Christians, I think, err because 
we're instructed by Christ to deny ourselves, and I believe we should, and, and to, to mortify the flesh. But we're to love ourselves with the love of God. So love has an, an upward dimension, an outward dimension, and also an inward dimension where we rest in God's love and we're able to, to experience freely that love within us. A lot of people don't allow themselves to experience that. And in so doing, us recognizing this is the fruit of the Spirit, we are grieving and quenching the Spirit when we do so. This love is, is agape love. It's God's love. It seeks the highest good of others. Now, this love is not based on emotions, it's not based on feelings, it's not, it's not what the world describes as love. No, agape love is a decision, it's a commitment to the well-being of others. And it's without any type of condition or circumstance. It's not swayed by, by anything else. It's, it's a, a steadfast commitment to love. And there's a big difference between liking someone and loving someone. And we are to not only love our neighbor, but we are to love our enemy. Love is the commandment that the believer is given for every encounter that we have. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, we are to, in God, in Christ, in the Holy Spirit, love those that we come in contact with. In John 15, 9, Jesus says that we are to continue in His love. As the Holy Spirit works in our lives, we are continue, we're to continue in His love. Jude Verse 21 says that we are to keep ourselves in the love of God. We, we just read in 1 John chapter 4 and, and verse 17 says that we are to be perfected in God's love. The very nature of God. The thing that I believe every human being needs more than anything else. Apart from salvation, which... This encompasses salvation, and that is love. It is that thing that we so desperately desire. We can only find it in God. In the giving and the sacrifice of His Son. And as one believes and embraces that grace and salvation and is filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit desires to develop that very nature within and we are to manifest that. It's a fruit that develops. It's just a natural progression as we abide in Christ, as we stay in His Word, as we trust in Him, as we cherish and treasure Him in our hearts, as we trust Him. The Holy Spirit works within us. And love is developed. You can tell a person is growing closer to the Lord if they're growing in love. You can tell... A person is filled with the Holy Spirit if they're filled with love. It's interesting that many people look at the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in people's lives by the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And although I'm all for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, I believe the fruit of the Holy Spirit is something that, that is, is manifested so much more than the gifts. Fruit is to be manifested continually, constantly. Love is where it's at. Love is where it's at. God is love. And that's what the Lord desires. No, the Lord commands you and I to do. And that is to love. To love. I believe this describes the abundant life that Christ promises to give. And I believe it is true that if you're not loving, you're not living. Allow the Holy Spirit to manifest the nature and character of God within. And that is love. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you 
for the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for your love that you demonstrated to us on the cross with your Son. It is through Him that we receive this love. It's through Him that we receive the Holy Spirit. And it's by the power of His resurrection at work within us that your very nature is manifest in us. Help us. Help us to continue in your love. To grow and be perfected in your love. Help us to remain in your love. And let every aspect of our life be shaped by your love. Help us to be fruitful in love. We invite the Holy Spirit to manifest the very nature of God Almighty within us. Let love fill our lives. We ask, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.